This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Oh, yes, indeed. Welcome, everybody, and welcome, like always, Leon. Hello, hello. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you, Leon. Uh -huh. um, and except you and me, uh, we also have an inter interview, as always. Yeah. But it's a first-timer. It's not a single-person interview, but a multi-person interview. Yeah. Let's see how that goes in a minute. It is going to be about the new email builder and mm -hmm. all the tips and tricks and everything you want to know about it everything that's not in the docs so stay tuned for that one yeah so we're recording this on the 8th of march 2021 yeah. and that means we are living in the age of mordic 3.3.1 yeah the latest release of mordic does not only bring the new email builder which we will talk about in the interview today, but a lot of polishing for existing features um, as well as some enhancement for the webhooks and the dashboard. Um, yeah, it's not looking too different, but under the hood, it's uh, much more, yeah, it's faster and better to use. So you maybe won't see the change immediately, but you will feel it. And um, there's also been yeah a new requirement that's needed for 3.3.1 yeah that's a technical one indeed that some people stumbled upon yeah. and that's the php version required is now bumped to 7.4 mm -hmm. which is the uh, latest supported version 7.2 is no longer in official official <laughs> 7.2 is no longer uh, under official support, mm -hmm. so the Mordic dev team also decided to let go and uh, require 7.4. Yeah. I know there are companies out there who are running Ubuntu server or other things that still have 7.2 and then actually maintain 7.2. Uh, we don't, so you will have to upgrade to 7.4 yep. and maybe Ubuntu 20 instead of 18 uh, what have you um, not a big deal it works or it has worked uh, very easily wherever I um, well was in touch with such an upgrade yeah I've got um, the same experience so yeah. so yeah talk to whoever is running your servers if you're still on 7.2 and make sure they either update the PHP version or the entire server if necessary. Yeah. And then there's a lot of additional code uh, coming out like, like it always did in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. For instance, we finally have an RSS to email plugin that works with Mordic 3. Oh, finally. It was very popular with Mordic 2. We actually had two and a half uh, <laughs> solutions for Mordic 2. And so far we had zero uh, full-blown ones for Mordic 3. Yep. And now one fell from the sky from a website called morticapps.com. Mm -hmm. The website calls itself a Mordic App Store. And that, mm. yeah, more, a <laughs> bit. See, yeah. Leon is frowning here. Yes. Um, of course, this is an infringement of, of uh, the, the brand copyright and everything, mm -hmm. so it, it it is not okay to to call a website this way yep. and i'm sure ruth is already <laughs> in process of telling uh, people i mean the the uh, whoever is behind that website Pretty about sure. it and <laughs> ask them to change it to a name that complies with uh, the guidelines of mordic yep. uh, other than that it's of course fantastic news i have no idea who is who is behind the website so i i would suggest they identify themselves <laughs> because they're doing something good for the community. Even if yeah. they sell it for a buck or three, um, that's fine. That's uh, always good for the ecosystem if somebody is doing things and maybe make make a dime out of it. Yeah. So yeah, multiple people, multiple people told me about this thing and told me it's it's good. It can be used. It does a good job. Perfect. I didn't check myself, mm -hmm. but. Um, Give it a shot, and um, you people at mordicapps.com, uh, you're very welcome. Um, but please, please uh, do, do, do tweak <laughs> the name. Yeah. yeah. 
And then um, another problem got solved. At Double. least uh, we now have a hack to, to solve the, the long-term problem. And that is, um, has to do with Mordic campaigns. Mordic campaigns lives on actions, but also on, on uh, um, decisions and, and uh, what's the other one? Conditions. Conditions, decisions. Yeah, that's yeah. the two ones. So um, there's a lot of decisions and, and uh, criteria to do that, but time and again you run into things that you want to check and you can't yeah. because it's not flexible enough. And of course, everybody's dreaming of a super flexible, generic uh, <laughs> condition builder Would in Monic. Sweet dreams. And I'm sure uh, <laughs> it's going to be there very, very soon. <laughs> Uh, but for now, we have uh, a workaround. And uh, who else would it come from if not from Joey? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Joey did a blog post and gave or described two examples in depth of how he is doing that. He's calling it the conversion, conversion table mm -hmm. thing. Um, I understand it as simply uh, creating a, an, ex an external PHP script that does some sort of conditional checking. Mm -hmm. And that could be whatever in my mind. It could be, is it a, a public holiday in, in the UK today? Or it could be, do we have less than, than 20 degrees Celsius today in, in Berlin? It could be whatever. It could also be, uh, please check the email, whether it's one of the competitions or you name it. So um, now what we do with this external PHP script, is, or it could be anything, mm -hmm. not just PHP. What, what we do with it is create a webhook web in the campaign, yep. go to the PHP script, uh, and then work on, on the result that's coming back from the script. And voila, you do have the logic, uh, can use the logic in Mordic, even if it's actually implemented, implemented outside of Modic. There's a pretty smart workaround, I gotta say. Yeah, of course it requires that external script and you have to either do it yourself or find somebody to do it for you. Yep. You should better do it in a secure way, um, like always, but I do think it's not a big deal and it's very helpful for those who are looking for a, or have been looking for a solution. Yeah. So, like always, thumbs up to Joey and link in the show notes. Talking about thumbs up, we're coming to the feature request of the week. Um, there's been a forum thread about sending SMS using the Amazon SNS uh, service. Currently, you can only send SMS using the Twilio plugin, but um, some people suggested that this should also work using the Amazon SNS plugin. So um, there's been a feature request getting that to work. The link to that will be in the show notes. And if you're interested, then give it a thumbs up and maybe we will have that in the next release already. If, oh, oh, yeah. It, it, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up uh, from all sides. Um, if nothing else, for the name, SMS over yes. SNS. I <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, a more or even more promising way to get something implemented and eventually into the core, if it makes sense, is um, to not just having the feature request, but to uh, allowing money to be paid. Yeah, and uh, that's what our bounty program is good for. Mm -hmm. We mentioned it in our last po podcast, and here we have a good example of how it can work, because... Um, The example that I'm talking about is the Outlook plugin yep. that we want to be renovated and, uh, yeah, actually re redone. <laughs> um, and that's an older thread, but but eventually somebody came up. Uh, why don't we try the bounty program on this one? Yeah. And so immediately some people said, "Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to chip in my 60 bucks or 80 bucks or whatever." Oh, nice. And if enough people do it like that, even with that kind of small amounts, amounts or maybe even 100 or more, if you may, um, then we're pretty close to getting this implemented yeah. and nobody's paying a lot for it the only other thing that's missing in this case and in general uh, is required is somebody to 
uh, be in charge of the whole thing. So True. you do need a person who, who writes down the specs, who makes sure the specs is is in sync with other people's uh, other people expect, mm -hmm. <laughs> who finds the right person to implement this thing at that money yep. and uh, who also ensures that the result it works and then does does a good job so that's not a lot of work but it's absolutely necessary without it that we're gonna get nowhere so uh, here's my invitation to you yes <laughs> you, me? You, no. Me? yeah <laughs> no no <laughs> Not, not not Leon, but but you, the listener to this, if you care about the auto, uh, outlo uh, outlo <laughs> Outlook Outlook <laughs> plugin yeah. for Mordic, um, and if you have uh, an hour or two to spare, uh, do go to the forum thread linked in the show notes and uh, maybe show up and um, take responsibility. Or if you think you don't have that hour or two, um, just chip in another. 60 bucks or whatever yep. um, that would go a long way <laughs> yeah and, and uh, eventually we're going to be there and uh, I personally I'm not in need of, of, of the <laughs> Outlook, Outlook plugin why do I say <laughs> Outlook um, Outlook plugin but uh, I always love it when, when Mordic gets richer and new new processes do work. So I'm going to go there right after the recording and chip in my yeah. uh, contribution in terms of, <laughs> I don't know, 100 bucks or something. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's get that going and then replicate this thing for many other features to come. Yeah. Uh, then we're coming to the next topic. There's been a new entry in the documentation under the name of a detailed cookie documentation so we are having a page about cookies i think that's some information that many people yeah found out by trying themselves and making their own research but we did not have a compromised page about cookies in the documentation compromise you mean comprehensive comprehensive yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but now we do yeah so um Yeah, the link to that is in the show notes and the page explains pretty well how the modic cookies work. Yeah, well, 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 I think uh, there ah, let, let me finish. Um there still are some uh, cookies which seem cryptic and like non used, like random hash names and they won't be listed or aren't listed there, but I think you know a bit more about that. Uh, I, d I don't. Um, I just <laughs> wanted to say I, I, I know what you mean, but but I think some people may be confused about uh, the background of all this. Uh, this is not about how do we do tracking or stuff like that. It is simply about what cookies does Mordic set mm -hmm. and what domain and what circumstances. And um, the purpose for that is typically the consent manager. Con consent manager. Good, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. so, so whoever has that in place for his website um, will have run across the problem that, that uh, ooh, there's so many cookies that, that Mordix is setting and, and I need to reverse engineer everything and I don't get yeah. the, find the resources and now we have those resources. Finally. And the one thing you are uh, referring to, those random name cookies, mm -hmm. uh, I understand they are legacy they can be oh, safely yeah. ignored uh but they are actually not mentioned in the documentation here and um so to the best of my knowledge yeah uh, well we we do ignore them that's all i can say <laughs> our best yeah. practice so nonetheless, it's yeah. really important if you are uh, in charge of implementing consent managers and it's a high time that we have this and uh, i'm glad we have it yes yeah, finally yeah Yeah, talking about documentation, there is has been um, like a perfect example, just perfect textbook, basically example about how documentation and open source communities uh, can work. There's been a forum thread because a man named Adam Clark asked qu uh, a question and, and stated that the documentation just didn't help him out uh, in that case. And um, then somebody helped him 
just gave him a perfect answer what he needed and adam was stoked about that and yeah said that yeah he will start contributing himself and that's just like pretty good example of how of how open source community documentation work can work Wow, absolutely. What, what a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, even more thumbs up. Uh, that, that goes to Adam in this case. Um, what he did say was uh, he loves Mordic and uh, he, he was absolutely thrilled about Mordic, but, but in this case he was horrified by the documentation. <laughs> and this thing turned around uh, and then made him... Um, Uh, contribute his his part and then take charge and um, yeah I I'm also completely loving this this example of uh, of how it works in open source yeah yeah now um, we're finally getting to our interview part of the day the interview the interview Da-da-da. and and as I said it's a first timer it's not just one uh, interview partner but multiple. And uh, today we are welcoming the team behind the new email builder, uh, actually the email initiative, one mm-hmm. of those initiatives in Mordic that we have. And it's the first one that made it into the core product uh, from 3.3.0 on. And so today, w- big welcome to Adrian Schimpf from Idea2. Alex Hammerschmidt from Hartmut IO and Joey Keller from Friendly <laughs> Automate. Yeah, as always, Joey. <laughs> yeah, Alex and, and Joey, of course, you know from previous uh, Multicast interviews. So for Adrian, uh, it's the first time to welcome him here. And uh, yeah. here welcome. we go. And there we go. Here's an interview that I've been waiting for really, really long. Um, That's because I do love the fact that we finally have the new email builder. And also, I love the fact that we are more than one person. So, welcome to you all. Adrian Schimpf from Idea2, Alex Hammerschmidt from Hardmit.io, and Joey Keller from Friendly Automate. Hey, guys. Um, uh, I'm very happy that we were able to make it today with all of us on the line. I hope it's going to work technically and uh, also coordination-wise. It's the first time for me, so forgive me if anything goes wrong. Um, nonetheless, um, I think we have a really interesting topic at hand, and I'd ask everybody to give a really brief introduction, although Joey and Alex have been on the show before. Uh, for those who don't know you yet, please Uh, who are you? Where are you? What are you doing with Mordic, etc.? What else you want to tell us? And I'd like to start with Adrian. Thanks, Eke. Great for being here. Like you said, you've been waiting for a long time. I've been waiting for a long time too. Once to be on your show. It's great to be here. I've been listening to it for a long time. And the other thing is, I've been waiting for the email builder for also a very long time. I'm. I've been looking forward to build this. But let's come back to me first. Um, I'm one of the two founders at Idea2. And we do two things. We do custom experience management and we do Mordic hosting out of Zurich, Switzerland. Okay, very cool. Thank you so much. And Alex, over in Cyprus, is that right? Yes, that's right. So very nice to be here again, Eke. Thanks for the invitation. And I'm... Really great for it. talking again about a nice thing here, uh, Maltic, and um, about the initiative we kicked off. Um, and yeah, I'm Alex Hammerschmidt from Hardmode.io, and we are hosting Maltic as a SaaS service for um, small businesses um, specialized on e commerce and affiliate businesses out from. So we are operating it from Cyprus, but our main target uh, customer is in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Um, Yeah, so German-speaking community. Okay, very cool. And then um, this whole thing got started, or at least uh, one one spawn of it all, was uh, our last interview with with my friend Joey uh, over in Hungary. And when we last talked, uh, we, we that was before initiatives really 
were kicked off in, in Mordic. And now here we go. Hello, Joey. Hello, Eki. So yeah, I'm uh, Joey Keller, back in the podcast. And uh, I'm talking from Budapest. I'm the CTO of Friendly Automate. We work mostly also with small and medium-sized enterprises, help them automate their marketing. And we also serve Austria, Hungary, Germany, Switzerland. Uh, mostly our clients are from these countries. And yes, in the last interview, we talked about how cool it would be to have a better email builder. But uh, yeah, at that time, we were already talking with Adrian about it. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more about it when it comes to that point in the interview. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah, and while we keep calling it the email builder, what we're having right now and we're, what we're looking to see in the future is way more than just the email builder. Nonetheless, uh, I'd like to focus on, on email in the uh, earlier part of the interview and then move on to the, the larger vision. So don't be confused about email versus builder. The actual initiative is called the Builder Initiative and you guys have been collaborating collaborating there. Um, could, could someone please summarize for me the concept of initiatives in the first place and tell me more about yours specifically. Joey, maybe? Okay, so the initiative is uh, that if Morik needs some key area which, which needs some improvement, then a team comes together and tries to put that vision into writing, comes to Ruth, basically. <laughs> she says yes or no, or yes, go ahead, or please work on it more. And, uh, and then we try to collect the resources amongst ourselves, which means that she's not like, okay, here is five coder and one billion dollars, do it. But it's more like, okay, try to do something and I morally support you with full of my heart. And in case you need extra resources, then you can come back to me, but please try to do it low, as low-key as possible. So that's that's right now how initiatives look like. And the funny thing with this one was that I, I think I also came to you, Aki, that, hey, we need a new email builder. Can you help? What's going on? And you were like, hey, that sounds like an initiative to me. And I'm like, what's an initiative? And then you said, uh, I think, well, we'll figure it out together now, I guess. So that's how this whole thing started. And since then, there are multiple initiatives, which all of them are cool. And they all try to fix the problematic areas of Morik, which we all know. So um, if you, dear listener, would like to help out anywhere or you have some kind of pain point with Morik, then hop on the Slack and find your initiative and try to contribute. Yeah, excellent. And uh, you seem to remember it even better than I do. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So uh, in the end, it's always making the product better, right? Getting something into the core. And uh, in terms of a major milestone improvement, not just a little feature here and there, but a real milestone, that's what differentiates it for, from just regular ongoing improvements, which we have left and right all the time. Okie doke. Um, now, um, the actual email builder um, is sometimes, or the need for an, a, an email builder is sometimes disputed. I've heard people saying that, that designed email is overrated anyway and simple text emails might work much better in most places maybe somebody can give me examples where that is not the case or in other words why a powerful email builder is so important for Mordic and so important for Mordic's users um, Alex can you talk about that yeah sure um, yes I'm also from the side um, of, of, of people who are saying that designed email is overrated. But um, what I see is that the market demands a great builder because every major program in the newsletter or email marketing market has a really nice drag and drop builder or comes up with you know, nice drag and drop builders and a huge load of templates and so on. So people are demanding this. And from my point of view, it's um, very important. Or what I see with our clients, it's very important to 
give them uh, an easy to use builder and more important to give them great templates uh, uh, firsthand because most of them are not like not designers so they want to have something which is already designed uh, because they think it might be good to put something like this into the inbox of people um, the other thing is from an experience point of view <laughs> that like super designed emails um, tell a reader that you are not a private person writing an email. So from the marketing point of view, it's maybe not the best idea to send MailChimp look like emails. Um, so yeah, I think it's just from the marketing point of view to, to, to position Mautic as the state of the art tool on this very high, um, um, yeah, on this very difficult market actually, because the other tools are really forward with creating SaaS um, like experience or, or, or really nice template um, libraries and so on. So I think it's important for Mautic to do this as well, because people are looking at pictures and rate the tool before they really know what makes a good tool. So I think that's the that's the reason why it's really important to have a nice builder. Also, the builder goes hand in hand with the landing page builder and there it's even more important to have a great drag and drop builder nowadays. Mm. Yeah, I, I actually got convinced by, by clients that they do want fancy looking emails and that does make sense in their specific case, like like in fashion, for instance, when, when you show the new connect collection, uh, then, then you want that in a visually attractive way and it does not uh, confuse the users. Whereas in, in many other cases, uh, you really just want the Gmail optics or stuff like that. Okay, um, the actual builder, we did have a builder before, it did have some issues. What what improvements do we have with the new builders uh, in, in, in contrast to, to the original one? And um, what is the history and the current status of this new email builder? Yeah, I guess most of the listeners have worked with the old email builder. So they are well aware that it, while it's been around for a while and it is really good work, it has done a lot for the community, I'm sure. It has been a bit dated and it has some flaws. So I don't know, maybe you know that you cannot undo stuff you you cannot um, sometimes when you format something it's a bit tricky and just when you sometimes when you just want to drag and drop something from the from the side panel in, into the into the canvas area when I mean, you want to add let's say a button or something sometimes just uh, just uh, just floats around it goes anywhere not there where you want it to have want it to be um, so this is all better it's uh, it's with the new um, with the new email builder, we can provide a really good user experience. Um, it's it will be it will be simple drag and drop. You just take something, you you put it on the canvas, you release it, and then you can just click in there, edit the text, and go from there. We will also have a new rich text editor. This is the this is the part inside of the text where you. Where you make something bold, or you, you you change the color of something on the text. This is a, a big thing too. We can now update it to the newest version. It will be uh, truly with the week, and it will. I'm sure it will be great. It will be more robust, and you can you can undo stuff that you didn't want to do. I'm I'm really happy. I mean, my background is in user experience design, um, so the old builder has always been a bit of a pain to me. Um, and I had a little bit of a hard time to offering it to my clients, but with the new one, I'm really super happy. Okay, so where, where are we with the new one? With, with our latest uh, version 3.3, 3.3.1, uh, this new email builder is included as an installable plugin in, in the release candidate version, I think. Uh, how close is this to what you aim to release? And there are still a couple of things you have to consider if you if you use it now. Um, there are a couple of bugs that are that I, nobody wants to have in production. Um, but we are really looking forward to version four, 
Uh, our goal is now to release it for version four. Um, I'm, I've been working today mostly on it. Um, and I have a really good feeling by now. Um, there is, there are many things that, um, we need to consider, but we are on a, on a good way. It's coming along nicely. Okay. So the, the roots is still the, the builder that was initiated by web mechanic. Is that right? Yes, exactly. We, we took it from the great work that web mechanic did and we were able to merge that to to Mautic, to the open source community. And now we did some refactoring, um, some a feature roadmap. And so we can now build on that MVP that they built back there. Excellent. Very cool. And when we say version four, that is of course, end of May, if I'm not mistaken, right? So real, real soon. Very good. Um, can I ask some, some, specific questions i mean we know that there this is a release candidate and then there are still issues left etc but the bigger picture uh for instance migration from the legacy email builder as i'm already calling it to the new version how, how smoothly will that go will i have to th throw away all my templates and, and uh, redo them or or what's the deal um i've uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think you can definitely, I mean, you can definitely import it. Um, and then you will, you will be able to still use your old templates. Um, but um, once you saved it, I'm 99% sure that you will have to use the new email builder. So you cannot save an email and then go back to the old builder. But basically you, you can, you can, you can keep using your, uh, your old templates. I mean, I, I, I'm not talking of design templates here, but but actual emails, and uh, I, I can actually edit them with the new builder because it's all plain HTML, basically, right? Yes, exactly. That's the great thing. Mm -hmm. And um, that also implies uh, that we are not separating design, for, or this framework does not allow us to separate design from content. So, for instance, if I use a certain design um, and change that design template later on, that does not ripple down to existing emails still, right? That's a very good question and a great feature. Um, something that I've been missing for a long time too. Uh, it's not, it, it will not be done with the first release, but I'm, but we are setting the, the stage for, for, for future, for future features. So this is something that I'm sure we will build in at some point. Ooh, that's the message of the day for me. <laughs> Very cool. Is there any other things that you would like, would have liked to have in, in this first release, but, but uh, couldn't get in like, like any other bigger features or any other problems to solve? Um, we have, there's, there's many, many things that we like to solve, of course, and so little time. I mean, we are all doing this um, more or less in our spare time. Um, and if somebody's around uh, that wants to do some JavaScript coding, please join. It would, it would, be, it would be great to have you more power. I mean, there's so many features that we could add. Okay, so um, JavaScript coders left and right, or agencies who can um, send their JavaScript gurus to this team, you're very, very welcome, and uh, every all ha every helping hand is appreciated, I guess. Okay, good to know. Um, let's uh, switch gears a little bit and uh, give advice to our users on what makes a good email template good email design and i think the the perfect guy to answer that is uh, joey so i think the good design is what inbox is first of all so i'm also a huge fan of text emails but uh, certain brands cannot allow themselves to not to feature their logos and to make shiny emails because the picture are selling so the good thing with this email builder is that it's not too hard to learn uh, so it's easy to learn actually, but there are lots of 
uh, settings what you can use, which is really, really cool. So you can go really deep in changing your, your emails regarding the template. So obviously not wider than 600 if you're talking about email. And uh, since this email builder is, is uh, based on uh, MGML technology, um, it will be responsive, which is really, really cool. It will look good in every email builder. And I'm talking to you, Outlook 2016. And um, yeah, so it's super easy to create a template. Um, I will talk about it probably later. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good point. Because um, as I said in the beginning, template is not only email template, but this whole thing is capable of doing much more. For instance, already now building landing pages, the good old landing page builder is also obsolete when we switch to this new thing. Um, what, what's 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 the deal with landing page builder, Adrian? Yeah, it's a bit. It's great that we can use the same UI as we use for the emails for the landing pages too. It will be the same user experience, so people don't have to to learn something new. Basically, it's the same UI, um, but just different blocks. So a block is something like a, like a button, or it can even be something bigger, um, like I don't know, a whole carousel or something like, or like a hero section. So. What I really like for pages here is that we can start building blocks that um, are more sim very similar to what we have in, in WordPress 5. So it, it will offer a whole new universe for us here. It will make the landing pages a lot bigger, more powerful for, for Modic. Hmm. And uh, what about the media management there? We, we did have a very well hidden file manager of sorts in, in the old version. Is this still used in, in with a new builder? It will be a new file manager too. Yay, even more good news. Okay, very good. Now, uh, I'd like to follow up with you, Joey, about the templates. Um, what is the process for creating a template with this new builder? And um, so, be it email or whatever, how can I create my own template? And maybe also, how can we get more quality vanilla templates into the core so people have a better selection of really great templates um, when they install Mordic? So first of all, I think the original template builder had this feature of creating the templates because it was so hard to create templates otherwise. So email, nice shiny emails otherwise. With this builder, you can actually do a beautiful uh, email already based on the blank theme, which is really, really cool. But if you are into building templates, head over to mgml.io. There, there is a live builder you can use. Um, just uh, search the internet for MGML codes. There's a bunch of them, uh, MGML email codes. Uh, copy it over to the mgml.io page in the builder and start creating, I mean, go good old um, CSS style uh, changes you need to make. Um, the technology is super simple. It's more simple than HTML. Um, make sure that you're using the right references for images. And when you create the file package, it should be pretty much the same as the previous one. In the config file, there is one extra line which will tell that this is a Grape.js uh, compatible file. And uh, and that's it. So if you want to create your own, then you can do this following the steps. I'm sure that there will be some videos popping up on YouTube about how to do it. No, I wonder where on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Okay. And um, getting more pre a pre, you know, pre-designed uh, nice looking templates into the core i still believe that's that's also at least a selling point for modic and uh, if not even actually useful so uh, i guess you you already did some and um when we go to four i guess there will be maybe a couple more and uh can people contribute to that already so I know that Alex is making beautiful templates, and uh, and I think that if you anyone would join the iBuilder 
channel in Slack, then we can also help out how to get into the into the core and fill the fill this huge gap that we only have four, three or four uh, templates right now. Hmm. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, if it's really as easy as you tell, basically the same template mm, mm, packaging as before, and all that based on MGML, it should be really easy to, to come up with, with uh, beautiful ones in, in a short time. So yeah, if you have one and you want to get it into the template, um, uh, sorry, into the core, um, by all means, go ahead and do that and, and uh, leave your footprint in Mordic. Okay, so that's templates and um, my only question left is, is where are we going from here with this initiative and with Mordic? What are the next steps and what is the uh, future vision for the builder? And maybe Alex, can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think the, or no, so yeah, I think that the next steps for the builder obviously are bringing it out of beta into a first real release. Um, I know there are several people are using it already in production and um, including us <laughs> and uh, collecting data, what to do next and interviewing uh, customers, what they want, what they don't want or what they need, what they're missing. So the next steps would be to um, collect or even further collect. So we are collecting at the moment in the initiative um, meetings and in the initiative itself in the forum and on Slack, what people want, what people think of would be great and so on. So for this builder itself, so for the email and uh, landing page builder. And from there, I think the vision, so from my point of view, the vision is to create a, um, a sort of new user experience in Mautic regarding how to build stuff, especially, of course, email and landing pages, but also um, how to build the all the other um, things which are really neat and really great inside of Mautic, like uh, focus items, so or, or AKA pop-ups. <laughs> so um, focus items and also forms all these things go actually hand in hand with the user experience. And if we create one builder and people get used to how to use this, it would be actually the logical next step to make the same UI for all the other parts of Mautic. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. makes a lot of sense. Ah, oh, wow, wow. And uh, I, as a side note, interesting to hear that you two are using, really using it in, in production or at least in, in places. Um, same here. <laughs> um, so I think to, to get feedback, it, it is not a bad thing that people start using it or at least playing it around, uh, play, playing around with it more than just five minutes. Um, that's how we learn and, and, and if you find things, by all means, do give the feedback. Um, but on the other hand, of course, be warned that it's not safe and uh, it's at your own risk. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, speaking of, of vision, etc., cetera, um, I need to maybe give a little explanation about the, all these funny things that we have in the Mordic community. We, we do have the core teams. We do have uh, those initiatives, more than a handful. And we also have the concept of tiger teams, which is still in the process of getting off the ground. But email is of course one typical topic, one typical domain for a tiger team. And that is a, a, in a holistic way. So from technology, bug fixing, new features, visions, support, documentation, all that. Um, and that is of course, in the same space as you are. So in the, in the long run, this initiative will be over. Uh, the tiger, a tiger team will have to be there. In the short run, we will still want to work on, on low level features such as uh, mailing provider integration or bounce management or whatever, um, while the initiative is still optimizing the uh, builder UI experience. So how does that relate? Are you trying 
two, or do are you envisioning two parallel things or a transition or will the initiative take the role of the tiger team while it's there what's your ideas there does anybody want to start this yeah i'd like to start here um i think that there are as many opinions to that as people <laughs> and um but because initiatives is a very new thing in the community itself and um yeah we are kicking off here a or yeah we we are the 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 first yeah the first paper to run through a whole initiative and i think it's um important to find an endpoint somehow where an initiative ends and where it goes directly to tiger teams core teams and so on so i think the most important thing would be okay let's say what is the the goal or the the, the first end point of the initiative to say okay until here it's the initiative and from there we split it up in different tiger teams for example the email tiger team or which obviously has email builder in mind as well and the landing page tiger team and and so on and so forth um, to accelerate the work actually because everybody is interested in different um, features and in different things and yeah so i think it's it's good to accelerate from there but yeah as i said at the beginning i think there are more opinions so yeah i have an opinion um <laughs> there are more ideas right now than coders and that's that refers to the omotic project like if you go to the forum and people are posting stuff like can we have like all social network integration including the one in i don't know bangladesh and everything but why not well, why why don't we have it yet it's more like this is the approach so i think that coders are very much needed the people who do the actual work that's why i think this initiative could work so well because alex did some work on this already adrian also could contribute he's uh, he's getting his hands dirty as well and uh, and i think that this tiger team will also need some coders who who help out and the hardest part will be to separate the dreams from the from the features which can be actually done and useful for the broad community. And also, uh, Modic tries to be not do everything, but maybe be extendable with plugins. And we will have to decide what goes as a plugin in the future and what will be part of the core feature list. And that will be probably also work for, for the Tiger team itself. That's, of course, an excellent point. And I think it's important to have this distinction between the, the initiative with a more or less well-defined uh, large milestone goal, the goal that the initiative tries to achieve, and the, the Tiger team that does uh, all the nitty-gritty and, and fires out new features with every single modic release and as you say also is able to make the decision okay this this makes sense in the core and and this is the perfect plugin and maybe there's a certain quality to it so um and I, I also i also believe it's absolutely okay that we don't know the exact way but uh we're doing a little bit of pioneer work here and um yeah i love the fact that you guys are chipping in so much energy and, and uh, love to, to this feature that, that I, I do believe is, is important for Mordic. Um, well, anything that we forgot, anything that you want to mention uh, regarding the, the builder before we uh, wrap this up? Um, yes, I have one thing which we talked about not so much um, and that's um, how to get into it and make your hands dirty as well so everybody who listens to this and is r interested in um, modic development or especially development of the new builder and so on so we said it before like javascript coders welcome but um, i think it's also 
sometimes a little bit more than only JavaScript. So it would be amazing that everybody who wants to get involved in the code and get involved into GitHub and so on to just hop on board and yeah, come chat with us um, and yeah, leave your footprint in Modic, as you said it before, Eki. I think this is a very nice um, uh, picture. So yeah, I just wanted to mention this once again. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, nonetheless, for your large footprints that are already there. And I'm looking forward forward for the next steps that we will see uh, on the surface of Mordek. <laughs> uh, not, so, not such a great picture, anyway. Where can people find you online, Adrian? The easiest thing if they just find me on LinkedIn. So it's Adrian Schimpf. I'm sure you can put uh, the link in the show notes. Okay, will do. Um, Alex, what about you? Um, people find me online uh, as well on LinkedIn. Um, like put in Alex Hammerschmidt, the guy with the palm tree in the back. That's me. <laughs> that's in my garden. And uh, also on YouTube, that's the Hartmut Academy. And of course, at our website, we have a chat there. So just come on board. And I'm most of the time online and you, you can reach me there. Yeah, it's so boring in the sun, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Joey, what about you? We did to mention your uh, YouTube channel uh, lately. Uh, what's coming up next there and where else should people look? <laughs> okay, so I will uh, take a very deep look into how email works with Modic from the point when you create your email until the optimizing uh, cron jobs in the next installment of the marketing automation show thanks for mentioning you can find me at joeykeller.com or if you ask questions in the forum i'll try to answer you can ask me uh, directly as well i'm joey k and i'll try to help out as soon as possible and we appreciate that a lot um and that applies to all of you thanks so much for your great work and i can't wait to see the final version one of, of the new email builder in, in Mordic 4, but I'm so happy we have it already in 3.3.1 in a usable way. Okay, thanks everybody for your time and uh, it was a pleasure talking to you and I'm looking forward to do this again. Cheers. Thanks, bye. Thank you, Eike. See you. Thank you. Take care. Now I gotta say, having an interview with three persons is um, pretty impressive. You managed that pretty well. I Got to give you my props. That was a very well done interview. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it again. It's 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 fun and it's uh it's tricky when when you do it remote, but yeah, it did go very well. I do believe. Um, so what else do we have? We have Google Summer of Code, and that smells like Leon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we as the model community applied for the Google Summer of Code, and. We have four awesome projects which we, we applied to the Google Summer of Code. Um, but as we record this Modicast episode, we actually do not know yet if we got accepted into the program because the results will come at the 9th of March, which is tomorrow. Yeah. And so we just can say that we hope that we get accepted. All with all four project if possible projects if possible. And um, yeah, you out listener will know the answer when this episode airs because the results will be in the show notes. Exactly. If you haven't heard of Google Summer of Code, it's similar to what we did last year, the Google season of docs. Yep. It is basically you can get sponsorship from, from Google for well-described projects find people who are willing to do that project and get paid by google and that makes a project better and, and that is uh open to all open source projects yep. and uh the most awesome one <laughs> get, get selected oh no oh, if you don't <laughs> don't, don't get selected <laughs> we're in trouble <laughs> no okay let's uh keep fingers crossed and maybe one or two projects get accepted and that'd be great hopefully okay. look for more in the show notes and then we do have facts, and yeah. that's actually news about the education team. Yeah, um, we have a new team lead. I handled my uh, role as a team lead to Favor because um, I'm just not having the time at the moment. And I've been looking for someone to replace me for just a, yeah, a couple of weeks, maybe a month now. And Favor stepped up because she uh, has the time 
on one hand. On the other hand, she is super motivated and super well suited for this position as she stepped up to be the assistant team lead already just a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, I'm super stoked that she accepted this handover and I'm expecting her to do great. Just she has all the resources you need to be a team lead and Yeah, welcome to the leadership team, Fever. And uh, for, if you think you have heard that name before, that's probably because she was uh, one of the persons selected in last year's Google Summer of Dogs. Uh, and uh, I think season she, of Dogs. Oh my yeah, God. Season of Dogs. <laughs> yeah. And she also had, I think, a talk at the Mordicon or managed some uh, behind-the-scenes stuff at Mordicon, at least. I'm not 100% sure. And she uh, was super active in the documentation. So I yeah, think... Pretty sure you heard that name already. Yeah, <laughs> and you will again. That's a promise. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Mordicon, um, of course, we're already... Uh, yeah, stoked. <laughs> yeah, excited. Completely, <laughs> completely excited about uh, it coming up in only three months from now. Yeah. Uh, so the website is now online. The, the uh, announcement has been published, I think, over last uh, Mordicast. Yeah. That includes a, a call for sponsors or the, the sponsorship openings. Uh, the gold is already sold out, so if you're keen to uh, show up uh, and, and uh, be seen at Monticon, silver is still available. Yep. So, um, yeah, that's a tip from my side. The other thing that is now open is the call for papers. So if you do want to do a talk at Monticon, uh, we're, we appreciate all... Um, We appreciate all submissions and uh, we're very happy to have a very, very diverse um, offering of, of topics and, and speakers. Yeah. So by all means, do come up with, with an interesting topic, uh, be it technical, be it strategic, be it uh, handling and usage, best practice, whatever. Um, there's a lot of categories and whatever it is, yours gonna fit in for sure. Like last year, we will have a lot of uh, international talks, so non-English talks. We, we decided to do it track-wise. So if you want to have a talk in, in your language, you better make sure you have multiple. <laughs> yeah. um, so our suggestion is head to the forums, to the um, local language forums. There's a thread for every language, mm -hmm. or for, for Mordicon. Yeah. Um, so it's a good chance to coordinate, make sure you have five or six talks at least per language to make sure it's an entire, entire track and not just a random mix. Yep. Yep. So we, we do appreciate, we do love the, the non-English talks. Um, so that's also welcome. What else is there to say? There's a lot of other news. This already feels like we had 20 today. Uh, <laughs> At everything least. Everything <laughs> else is going to be in the newsletter, in the yeah. Mautic newsletter on mauticcast.com slash newsletter. So if you haven't signed up yet, go right there and sign up and receive everything else on a regular basis. Um, other than that, we appreciate every other feedback as well all the thumbs up all the stars <laughs> we take them <laughs> yeah we take if it's at least four <laughs> no no we we actually appreciate every sort of feedback especially criticism or or ideas for improvements yep. um give it to us and uh, also do remember that we are still looking for case studies uh, stuff like that so because we want to do a series of case studies and stories and, st and things like that and with or without an interview uh, please please give this to us for now uh, thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Mordequest and I hope you will be with us next time until then stay safe talk bye to bye. you soon cheers bye bye <laughs>